Hello, James here from Collingwood's Contraptions. Today we're going to look at how to build yourself your very own Mr. Tiny Toe Pants. This would be the little one that I had being all remote controlly, not the one that's behind me, and there, who is all autonomous and stuff. So, firstly, I've got to get him out of the box. Start one. So yes, that is Mr. Tiny Turret Pants. As you can see, he's got all the bits you'd want in a tiny turret. He's got a little shooty bit, he's got a little eye, and he's got a little ammo -y bit, and he's got some cute little feet, just like you want. Now, if you want to build your own one of these, there's a couple of things you're going to have to have access to. The first being a 3D printer. At work, I have access to a couple of uh, rep Replicator 2Xs, which are made by MakerBot. Lovely extrusion printers tend to work without any sort of massive issues going on. Uh, the other ones out there, Bits from Bikes would be another company you could go to. Um, Shapeways, if you don't have access to a 3D printer, send the files to Shapeways, they can print it for you. It's grand. They could do it in metal, actually. That'd be, that'd be lovely. Um, I don't know if you'd be able to... I don't know, if I do a shiny... Ooh, you could do like an adamantium. Uh, Australium, that's one. You could do yourself an Australium turret. If any of you guys want to do that, post some videos and photos and stuff, marvellous. Might be a little bit heavy for this, you'd need to get some really strong servos, but we'll have a look at that later. All the parts are available on Thingiverse. I'll post a link in the doobly-doo and probably put an annotation bit, sort of, you know, here-ish. Uh, otherwise, go on to the Collingwood Contraptions Facebook page. A link is there that will take you to Thingiverse, download all the bits, Download the slightly nice, I think it's called the improved chassis. That's one where I've actually lifted uh, his neck up a little bit there. We'll have a look at why in a second. So here we have Mr. Tiny Tarot Pants in all his close-up glory. We're going to have a look at all the different components, all the bits you need to print, all the bits I was just laser cutting, and we'll have a look at some of the electronics, how you can control him, and we'll have a look at one of the files which I've had to change slightly due to a slight engineering slash design oversight. To start with, we're going to have a look at the legs. Now, these have been laser cut in high impact polystyrene, that's hips. Now, I've laser cut these because they're essentially two dimensional files. I've designed them in top view. If you go on Thingiverse, you'll be able to see a picture of the file that I was, I was editing. So I've designed them in top view uh, using Rhino and then just simply laser cut them out. It also means I can engrave in some tiny little bits of detail. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick that up. Oh yeah, it'll pick up the little bits on the, on the top sections there. There we go. So I've ended up laser cutting these does mean I can use a multiple multiple different materials. The first version of the legs was in this stuff, which is acrylic. Now, acrylic laser cuts really, really nicely. It comes out shiny, it's got nice edges, it doesn't melt at all, it's fantastic. The only problem with it is that when it fails, it sort of snaps. Not even a nice snap, it splinters, which is not good. You get sharp bits going everywhere, taking that to a convention is gonna be hideous if it all goes nastily wrong. Whereas high impact polystyrene tends to bend a little bit first and then just sort of break. If you take a sort of gen generic plastic that most things, that most sort of toys have in them, give them a bend, give them a sort of twist, they go white and then sort of just slowly die, which is what you want in something that could be taken to an invention rather than something that's going to shatter and leave sharp parts all over the place. So that's why I've gone with high impact polystyrene and laser cutting. Hopefully some of you guys will have access to a laser cutter. Uh, hopefully you might be at university or at school. If university or school, you should have access to a laser cutter. Otherwise, there are a lot of bureau services in a lot of cities that will laser cut stuff for you. And something like this big really shouldn't be that expensive, especially if you can get hold of, get hold of the materials yourself. So the second part you're gonna to want to print off, in this case, is the main chassis components. That's everything from up here down to here. I'll take out the, the neck support so we can have a proper look and see where that starts and where that ends. So that's, you see, that's everything that's holding the servos, everything that's holding the battery pack, everything all the way up to this top servo 
up here. And we've got four servo servos on here. Uh, three of them are Etronics servos, and one of them, the one at the top, is a Vigor servo. These tend to come in a lot of Arduino basic kits, or so 20 quid off eBay. You can get yourself a kit, it's going to come with one of those servos. Now, these are standard 9 gram servos. So any 9 gram servos you should have should hopefully fit into the chassis. Right in there, I've just had I've had to push that servo in. We've just had to file away just a little bit of it. So there might be a couple of places where you're going to need to edit uh, the chassis. Now, on the improved version of the chassis, I've actually done these edits for you. So there's a little bolt you can just see under there that is holding onto the servo. You see there's a little bolt going all the way through. It's then held onto a nut at the back, and I've had to drill that hole out to fit the nut in so it doesn't spin round, and then sort of slice it into a hexagon shape with a Stanley knife. That size of nut has been cut out for you. That's a three millimeter, uh, three, mil, three mil bolt, so it's about five, five, mil, five mil wide nut on there. So if you've got five mil wide nuts that fits M3 bolts, you should be able to fit that in quite nicely. You might have to drill the holes out slightly on your servos. All these I've had to go through very quickly with a three mil, with a three mil drill bit. Now, as you can see here, the legs are just a little parallel mechanism, so nice and nice and easy. These two sections here, they might look very similar, but they're actually quite different. The bottom one has a larger circle at the end, and that's to encompass the servo horn section that I've had to laser cut in. So on the end of all servos, and we've got one here that we're going to take apart. We're going to take apart together you know, to show how things work. So we've got a servo here. This is a nice big one, standard size servo by Tower Pro. Yeah, Tower Pro, there we go. And we've got a servo horn on the top. Now, if we take this off, always remember to hold onto the servo horns when doing this, otherwise you end up breaking your servos. So there'll be a little bolt that comes out. Don't lose these. They're, they're really, really awkward to get hold of more. Always stick them in the box. So if we take our servo horn off, and it should just pop up. Should just pop off nicely. There you go. Ta -da. Now here, this one, this has a metal one, but the one on the turret is a nice plastic one. We'll go in there. Ooh. Now you can't see this because my camera's rubbish, but that has little teeth going around it. It's essentially a tiny little gear. Now that needs to be pressed into whatever the servo is trying to hold onto. In this case, a nice little servo horn, but on here, it's a laser cut leg. So I've had to spend a little bit of time just working out exactly what the size of star shape that I need to put onto the end of the leg in order to get it to fit properly. If you guys have bought different servos to me, you might have to edit the file slightly. That's why I've given you guys the AI file as well as the uh, 3D printable file. If you guys are 3D printing, it might even be a little bit more of a pain. What I would do in that case is print it off, see if it fits or not, see how many teeth you've got on your gear on your servo, and then try and maybe file, file them down just so you've got the something that fits nicely. If you really don't care about your servos and you're doing this permanently, stick the leg on, glue it on, off you go, everybody's happy. Now, as you can see here, I've had to use a couple of nuts and bolts to keep all the legs together. So we've got, again, M3, ooh, there we go, fingers in the way. We've got little M3 bolts, we've got little M3 nuts. We've got some lock nuts on the end to hold everything in place. If you don't use lock nuts, you're gonna need at least lock nuts or lock washers, so that when your leg is moving up and down constantly, you don't end up with your little bolts undoing themselves and then your leg will fall apart and none of it will work properly. So we've had a look at the legs, had a look at the chassis, we've had a look at one of the edits of the chassis. If we keep going up, we've got this little this little servo here that does the, the pan motion on the neck. Now normally you really shouldn't be moving your servos like this because you can break by this, but if you as long as you're gentle, it should be fine. So we've got a couple of parts here. We've actually got the chassis finishes here and I've had to add in little neck support. Now that was because when I first put his neck on and I'll show him that with him on. If we whack him on quickly. Ooh, there we go. When he looks left and right and up and down, the whole neck bit sort of wobbles a little. <laughs> sort of wobbles a little bit. It doesn't feel particularly sturdy. That's because I've actually designed this slightly badly. We've got. Ooh, there we go. Down we go. We've actually got the servo. The the head chassis there is mounted directly onto the servo horn of the top servo, which isn't the most genius way of attaching things. What you really want to do is have your servo only doing the movement and having some other thing supporting supporting your your chassis or whatever else you're actually trying to move. So I've produced this little little head chassis, so this little head support section just slots in there around the servo, just stops him wobbling side to side a little bit. So once you've got that bit printed off, print off your, your head chassis section. 
Again, this is a nice and simple part, doesn't require any alterations. And then we've got our face section here, which I would suggest printing up this way. Now, the only thing I've had to do afterwards is get a junior hacksaw, stick the end of this in a vise, and just cut that slot out. Now, that's because I forgot to model that. Uh, in a couple of days, you might end up with a version of the face that actually has that cut out for you, if, uh, if I get round to it, but we'll see how that goes. So on the top section here, we've actually got two parts. We've got the faceplate, and clearly we've got the ammo drum. They've been printed separately because they're in two different colours. This one printed in red, that's printed in black. The faceplate I've printed upwards, so I don't have to use very much support material. And then the back bit, the ammo section, I've printed with the base at the bottom here. Now these are attached, and I've just pulled those apart so you can see them slightly better. There's two holes that line up there, and then there's two little doweling rods. I've used six mil doweling rods, but if you can only get hold of seven mil, that's fine. Just sand them down until it's a nice press fit. What you want is to be able to push these two together and have them slot together nicely, hold it in place without having to use any glue. If you can use as little glue as possible, grand. Because that means that you can, you can take it all apart again, which is marvellous. So the back here, we've got... The last sections you're going to have to print, they go link 1, link 2, link 3, and link 4. If we take off the head support, you can see there that there's that little extra link bit just underneath that wraps around the servo horn there. That's so that we have something to attach the second link to. Now the second link, if we look at the back, we can see it's actually two links. So you're going to need to print two of link 2 and then one of all the other links. Link 4 may require a couple of little bits of sanding just to press it up into the divot that I've left in the ammo drum. Once that's there, the only bit of glue you should really be using on this entire thing, a little bit of Araldite, which is two-part epoxy resin that you can do. Make sure you wear sort of, uh, either, either a dust mask, just so you definitely don't get it in your face. Um, you know, safety goggles, all that sort of stuff. Do it in a ventilated area as well. That's a really good plan. A little bit of epoxy resin in there. That'll stick those two together, hold it down for... What it five minute epoxy, hold down for five minutes, that will be stuck there for life. Grand. They should then allow him to lean upwards and downwards, and you should get that lovely link motion that you have in the game. Now, the oversight that you may have just noticed is that the remote control receiver, which is this massive jumble of wires back here, so the remote control receiver sits in this little, little carriage here. <laughs> I, I had forgotten that there were going to be wires coming out of this thing. So when I designed it, I didn't think about the fact that those links weren't going to be able to go into that area. So on the improved version of the chassis, this carriage section here finishes a whole centimetre further up, which should give you enough space for him to go up and down, hopefully. Now the problem I have then is that if I want to puppeteer him properly, I want to look left and right whilst looking up, I, I, I can't. So yeah, print off the improved version of the chassis, it should work a little bit nicer. Now the last bit, the back leg, is a little bit different to the front leg. We've got sort of a double section there with a double foot and then a single a single front part with a slightly smaller joint at the top. That's how I end up with a nice little angle there so it doesn't look quite the same as it goes up and down. Now, once you've got hold of all your parts, so you've printed them all off, printed off the ammo plate, printed off the face plate, printed off uh, your head chassis, your support, which we'll stick back on now printed off your support, printed off your improved version of the chassis, printed off all your legs, or laser cut your legs if you can, laser cutting's good, laser cut, got hold of all your servos, mounted your servos, mounted your batteries, you can start working out how you're actually going to program this thing. Now for this, I'm going to pass you over to, uh, to another YouTuber called Crab Fu. Now I based this robot off one that he made called a swashbot. And a swashbot is based around a swash plate from a helicopter. So on a lot of toy helicopters, a lot of real helicopters as well, you have four motorized actuators. So four actuators underneath the rotor blade. So imagine we've got a rotor blade spinning around up the top here. If we then flick this on, there we go. You can see there that we can change the angle of our rotor blade by changing the angle of the legs. Or changing the angle of the actuators even, because it wouldn't be legs in the helicopter, clearly. See, when Mr. Torridge Pants does push-ups, he isn't actually, in fact, pushing himself up, pushing the world down. Back and back over. There we go. So, 
<laughs> what I would go and do, have, go and have a look at some of the Crab Foo uh, Swashbot videos. There's some really nice stuff about how to align your servos, how to program uh, your controller, what style of controller you need. Now, I've gone for a slightly cheaper version. I've gone for something off Hobby King. This is a six channel T6 RC uh, unit. They're pretty cheap, 20 quid. You can get hold of one. Uh, everything seems to be 20 quid that I buy. Yes, 20 quid comes with the receiver. I think some of them you can get as a kit with a couple of servos as well. So you can get hold of these uh, micro nine gram servos. Grand. What we're going to have a look at now, whilst you go you know, go and have a look at the swashbosh stuff to align your legs, all that sort of gubbins, we're going to have a quick look at the wiring. So on here we've got four AA batteries inside a little standard AA battery casing. We've got a PP3 clip going round to a little slide switch on the side, and the little eye that's in here, you'll notice it's blinking. That's because I've actually gone off and got hold of a blinking LED. Those are LEDs that come with a tiny chip inside them that allows you just to wire it up with three volts or three to five volts. Uh, if you're using if you're using five volts, uh, use a 220 ohm resistor. 220 to 330 ohm resistor will stop it from exploding. So wipe that in there. That voltage just means a little, little tiny chip in there. It's probably just a little oscillating circuit made out of a capacitor, uh, but that will just make it blink. So that's, again, grand. Once you've got them all wired up, and it's not particularly difficult to do, you've got your, your receiver at the back here where you need to put some put some wires in there, get hold of some little uh, standard, pitch, uh, standard pitch connectors. Those should be able to fit into the back there quite nice and easily. You should, hopefully, have a nice working little robot. There are some other instructions on the Thingiverse website. Uh, if you want to, uh, send me, pop me an email on the Conley Woods Contraptions Facebook page if you've got any questions. Uh, chuck me a comment on the video and we'll have a look at helping you make stuff. So, that was Mr. Tiny Charity Pants. Hopefully you guys have found that at least a little bit useful. The main thing to take away is print off all the parts, laser cut the bits you can, print the other bits if you can't, get hold of a receiver uh, and a transmitter. So, one of those gubbins. Require eight AA batteries, so get yourself a load of AA batteries as well. Rechargeables, because then you don't have to buy thousands of alkalines and you ruin the planet. Uh, get hold of all the electrical components. So just to reiterate, that is a AAA battery holder for four AAA batteries. You're going to want a little tiny switch and a little flashing LED. The rest of it, maybe some connectors as well, the rest of it is going to be all stuff that's already on the servo. So every servo already comes with little connectors. That should just plug straight into your receiver off you go. Most of this is pretty much a plug and play system, which is why I like that sort of receiver type stuff. The actual programming of Mr. Tiny Tiger Pants is a little bit complicated. I would follow Crabfoo's videos to start with using the standard swash controllers. What I found is that it, using the standard swash control didn't allow me to have the tilt movement as well. I could have four channels running at the same time. If you guys buy a slightly more sophisticated receiver, uh, transmitter and receiver package, you'll probably end up being able to do that slightly easier. I ended up having to not use the swash control at all and ended up using uh, using using a bunch of mixes. So I essentially had one of the servos going into up and down, one of the servos going into left and right, then mixing them all together in order to actually make the legs do what I wanted to. I then just had standard left and right, up and down on the on the head. So that was that was relatively easy. It was this bit that was a little bit complicated. If you guys have any questions, feel free to email me. Either message me on Facebook, put it in the comments. Uh, Collingwood's Contraptions on Facebook, or just, you know, send me a message over YouTube and I'll try and get back to you, give you a little bit of a hand. If you do end up buying the same T6 controller and you end up using pretty much the same servos, I'm quite happy to send you the code that I used or the little program that I used uh, that you can just you can just run with. Go for it. All great fun. So, final thing, thank you very much to Yagman X and Kai Creative for interviewing me at Comic-Con. That's the first time I've been to Comic-Con, the first time I've sort of worn, done cosplay properly, worn around in like, the whole costume with the tiny turret and everything. Uh, it was brilliant fun, you guys were brilliant. Uh, that was a nice, I'm so sorry I ended up sort of stealing you for like 10 minutes uh, at the time. I know you had other people to go and talk to. Uh, thank you very much for giving me sort of a kick in the backside to go and actually start doing this sort of stuff, to actually go and make, make some YouTube videos and show people how to build things. Right. Bye, YouTube. Jump cuts, Beth. That's what we want. Jump cuts. <laughs> right. Right. Um, where were we starting with? A blooper reel. That's what we're starting with. Me moving you on about crud. Um, Yes, don't touch the table because it's wobbly and the camera's on the wine bottle.